ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवत थर्ड कैंटो ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट चैप्टर टेक्स्ट नंबर नाइनटीन एक स्वयं संजगत सृक्षया ट्रांसलेशनल परपोर्ट बाई डिवाइन ग्रेस ए से भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रीला प्रभुपाद की जय ट्रांसलेशन My dear Lord, you alone create the universes. O personality of Godhead, desiring to create these universes, you create them, maintain them, and again wind them up by your own energies, which are under the control of your second energy called Yoga Maya. Just as a spider creates a cobweb by its own energy and again winds it up. Purport by Shila Prabhupada Kija. In this verse, two important verses. sorry important words nullify the impersonalist theory that everything is god here kardama says o personality of god it you are alone but you have various energies the example of the spider is very significant also the spider is an individual living entity and by its energy it creates a cobweb and plays on it and whenever it likes it winds up the cobweb thus ending the play when the cobweb is manufactured by the saliva of the spider the spider does not become impersonal similarly the creation and manifestation of the material or spiritual energy does not render the creator impersonal here the very prayer suggests that god is sentient and can hear the prayers and fulfill the desires of the devotee therefore he is sachidananda vigraha the form of bliss knowledge and eternity the sense the bhakti dant purport is speaking out before the lord whatever he has understood about lord the glories of the lord the lord has appeared before him and one after the other he is describing the glories of the lord especially the majestic aspects of the lord the aishurya aspects of the lord that entire the last verse was how the kala the time is spinning around the axis of brahman and how every living entity is under that influence of the kala chakra and here he says that my dear lord you alone create the universes you are the creator of the universes and then you are the one who maintains them and one who winds them up whenever you want and this all carried out by your second energy called yoga maya and the example is given just as a spider creates a cobweb by its own energy and again winds it up so prabhupada says in the purport very significant point that here it is even though it is uh, the lord is described as here as advitiya without a second advitiya atman without a second but yet he has got energies which he controls and he creates this universes so two important words nullify impersonalist theory that everything is god so proper says so the famous or the most popular philosophy among the so called gyanis is that god is nirguna and then that nirguna brahman without identity without individuality becomes this material universes becomes these jivas becomes everything and that is it he becomes and unbecomes 
when he becomes all these things they do not recognize that the lord has a personality they say everything is energy one primordial energy nirguna brahman something is existing eternally existing at least they agree that the buddhists don't say any nothing there's nothing like eternal it's an illusion the impersonalist mayavadis one step they come that beyond all this even if all this dissolution happens beyond this there is a impersonal nirguna brahman nirguna means you cannot qualify you cannot describe is it a energy no you cannot describe because if you say energy then has to be a person who created the energy so it is neither energetic nor energy any guna you say no it is not that guna because it is called nirguna brahman that nirguna brahman has become everything so ultimately there is no eternal god there is no eternal soul individuality whereas the shrimad bhagavatam is talking about an individual a supreme personality of god at whom kardamuni is having darshan and is praising him he doesn't say that you are part of this three guna he looks at the lord and he says that you are transcendental to all this three modes of material nature and you are transcendental to the universe even though you have created so many universes and so many universes are maintained and they are withdrawn still after withdrawing you still exist and the example is given of the spider the spider brings forth saliva from its mouth and creates a cobweb and then it the the cob and the spider moves inside all that and when it wants it withdraws everything spider still there only saliva has come the saliva is the energy of the spider so the cobweb is created out of the energy of the spider in the same way there is a personality supreme personality of godhead these mayavadis are not able to grasp this truth because they do not ultimately accept the descending process of knowledge they are gyanis in the sense they 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 get trapped in their own gyanic process the gyanic process they say how can god be a person how can absolute truth be a person because as per their empirical knowledge everywhere they have seen person means limited individuality means limited that is what you can experience in the material world that is a fact it's a factual observation that everything is just like the will of the wish all personal characteristics personal aspects for instance a person dies he all vanished where is he he doesn't exist anymore his feelings doesn't exist anymore so they say how can god be a person so this is the trap that they fall into they cannot just conceive that what are you talking you know absolute truth is a person how can i be a person person means concrete individuality how can it be but here it is described that he is a individual advitiya atman is a individuality who is becoming everything and yet he is separate so the idea that god is becomes everything and that is god is wrong that is god's energy chaitanya mahaprabhu said god's energy is simultaneously one and different from god because how can an energy be separate from god in that sense it cannot be separate from god because it is god coming from god's body transcendental body so this is also transcendental body but functionally it may act in the material world everything that you see everything is transcendental it is coming from god's body because every energy is the lords there is no difference between the energy and the energetic but energetic exist and energy exist eternally this is the point 
there is eternal existence of the energetic and the energy. And in a sample we see in the material world, everywhere we see there is a tiny person and tiny his energies. Every one of us are personalities and we have energy around us. We have powers, different powers, different energies. This body itself is a power that we have. The mind is a power that we have. These are all energies. We are able to move around in this material world and act in this material world. These are all my karmic energies. It is given to me. I am not the owner, but it is given to me. But in the case of the Lord, he has also got energies around him. Entire existence is energy around him. Why? Because he is not an ordinary person. This is called Vishnu Tattva. We, we have to understand the sample man and as a sample man as a sample God and then we can understand God. So Lord has unlimited, you know, one minus one is equal to one. That aspect is not uh, understood by the impersonalist. They understand, they again they say it is impersonal, one minus impersonal one is one. They say. <laughs> the Lord is one and from him so many energies are coming, still he is, remains the same. He is an inexhaustible source of everything. It is a glory of a person. One minus one is equal to one is a glory of a person. Because we, if I take out my hand, my hand won't be there. This is not my, this is not a, whereas the Lord, an entire form comes out of him, he still remains that. Advaita machudam anadim ananta rupam. The Lord has got unlimited forms, unlimited names, unlimited activities, unlimited universes, unlimited parts and parcels. It is inconceivable. Vishnu, the glories of Vishnu are inconceivable, glories of Vishnu Tattva are inconceivable, inexhaustible for a living entity to understand. And there it ends. One who understands that, he moves next to next level. Let me understand his, his sweetness aspect. Let me understand his Madhurya aspect. Let me understand his sweet, loving relationship. How Lord Narayana is a most loving person. Suhrutam Sarobhutanam. How he is a friend of all living entities. How he is giving an opportunity for all living entities to fulfill their desires, respect in their freedom, to do what they want. So, from once a devotee understands that the Lord is inconceivable, achintya, his shaktis are achintya. He is achintya vikti. A person, an ordinary person, you can, you be with him for few days, you can understand him fully. More or less. What is his mind, what is his nature, what is his desire, what is his activities, everything. You can make a list and put in a database. But the Lord, his glories cannot be enumerated at all. That enumeration, that tasting of the Lord's unlimited glories, that is called Shanta Rasa. It is a devotional Rasa. Glorification of the Lord. It's a devotional Rasa. Feeling the glories of the Lord is a devotional Rasa. Then one would want to serve such a Lord. Engage in devotion service, such a wonderful Lord. Because you also understand that one of his glories is that we are all him. Yet he is separate. There cannot be anything other than him. Adhutiya, there cannot be anything second. There cannot be anything non-Krishna in existence. We are all part Krishna. Krishna is whole Krishna. We are all part Krishna. There is nothing other than Krishna. Even material energy is part Krishna. Everything is Krishna. In terms of substance, everything is Krishna. In terms of function, yes, his supreme will dominates. He is everything and he is above everything. Being above everything, he, his will dominates for his Leela, for his pastime. 
the world exists, the existence is existing for him, Ananda Mayobhyasat. It is for Krishna's pleasure. That is why when we understand it is for Krishna's pleasure, it is not an easy statement to understand. We will think of ordinary man and ordinary man's pleasure like that, we think it is Krishna's pleasure. Because in our idea we have no perception of Vishnu Tattva. Vishnu Tattva is a different kind of a personality. So when we talk about he is a central enjoyer of everything, we feel it's, you know, okay, how can, you, you know, I am, how we are all not enjoys, only he is the only enjoyer. What is his existence? We are him. We enjoy when he enjoys us. That is the meaning of Ananda Mayabhyasa. The Lord is, has relationship with each and every living entity. And each and every living entity can, can contribute towards the total pleasure, Ananda Mayabhyasa. Starting with obedience. That is how it says, obedience to the Lord's will. Being dharmic. The entire Shastras, entire the secondary Shastras, do's and don'ts of Dharma are all based on this. How to make man less, and less selfish. And how to make him understand that he is not a separate self. He is part of God. Part and parcel of God. And he is part and parcel of God's pleasure. When he is part and parcel of God, Prabhupada gives always this beautiful example of how the finger is part and parcel of this body and this finger is also part and parcel of the pleasure of the body because he is getting pleasure or he is getting nourished at least here. In the spiritual Satchidananda body it gets pleasure. Sometimes part gets more pleasure than the whole. Prabhupada explains. And Purusha and Prakriti, they enjoy. Sometimes Prakriti gets more pleasure than Purusha. That is in the Satchidananda. Here, even we can understand in terms of nourishment, this body, material body. See, the finger is a part of this body. And the finger serves the whole body. And the whole body nourishes the fingers. So this nourishment here it is blood, oxygen, all these kind of things. You just take in Satchidananda body, it is Sat, Chit and Ananda nourishment. That nourishment is coming when we actually serve the Supreme Satchidananda. Prabhupada said, therefore he is Satchidananda, form of bliss, knowledge and eternity. So Vaishnava philosophy is not against Ananda, not against knowledge, not against uh, eternal existence, not against individuality, not against, like Prabhupada says yesterday, not against all these things. It is about Krishna being the center. It is about serving Krishna. It's pleasure. All these variegatedness are existing in the spiritual world also. And these variegatedness are meant for enjoying together. In the spiritual world, in the material world, I enjoy, you don't enjoy. If I enjoy, you don't enjoy. In the spiritual world, everybody is giving enjoyment to Krishna. When Krishna enjoys, enjoyment goes everywhere. Just like you pour water in the root of a tree, the water goes to the entire. It's a very big principle. It's, it's, a, it's, in, it's, it's a unfailing principle. You do yajna, you please Vishnu, the entire universe is getting the effect of it. We chant Hare Krishna here, the effect is not only for you, because you are part of this universe. When you are vibrating Hare Krishna Mahamantra, you are contributing to the peace of the world. Because you are pleasing Krishna. So selfish pleasure is localized pleasure. Devotion service pleasure is universal. It spreads to everybody. Your devotion service spreads to everybody also. Every, every tiny, just like this 
finger serves this body the fingers service is enjoyed by the total body benefit of this finger service goes to the total body in the total existence of krishna and krishna's energies so how harmoniously the entire existence moves towards anandamaya abhyasa that is the principle of existence even this material energy one fourth of the existence that is there one material energy is created it is again according to lord's leela he creates this vibhinamshas the small living entities tiny living entities brings them forth into this material world gives them freedom and constitutionally by that freedom they cannot they are not the masters of the material energy they are tiny so they learn that i my i am created with with the uh, constitutional need for sat chit and ananda pure sat chit ananda i am created like that we come forth from brahman unlimited living entities we are created like that then afterwards in the material energy when we are mixing with the material energy we see there is always a deficit of sat chit and ananda nobody is satisfied that is when athato brahma jignasa living entity questions that is when according to lord scheme of this creation this is his cobweb this he sends acharyas he sends guru sadhu shastra they are all there in the mid, in the middle of the material world in the midst of the material world where the living entities are brought by paramatma krishna brings one to the spiritual master then one hears about this then he exercises free will for exclusive love of krishna not for selfish pleasure not for karma but for devotional service then his journey begins these are all leelas of the total leelas of the lord the lord has designed this material world in such a way to distill pure devotees out of this material existence and pure devotees you cannot it is not a mechanical distillation they have to be distilled out of pure pure free will which living entities want to exercise their free will and give up localized selfish pleasure and seek pleasure for the lord who wants to get attracted to this unlimited personality vishnu tattva they get the opportunity to distill and evaporate and go into the spiritual world so ultimately it is inconceivable how big how large how extensive this creation is is inconceivable that is not easy nowadays for us to understand nowadays very easily we can understand this but 100 years back probably we could not have understood this we see all the stars and be saying maybe somewhere some end is there some little more little more little more some instrument is there we can see we can ultimately count the number of stars but today in the last 100 years it, it is found out that goes on and on and on and on and on they said solar system is a, one of the stars in milky way galaxy milky way galaxy contains 1 billion suns how many 1 billion suns out of that one sun is our sun and then after another 20 years they went behind and they further found out there are 1 bill min, in men numbers billion billions of galaxies and they say milky way is the smallest galaxy so where is all this going to end they are bewildered the universe is not only that the universe is continuously expanding why it is expanding they do not know suppose on the globe on a balloon you have two dots you blow the balloon what happens distance between the two dots goes on increasing no in the same way they have discovered that every global body is moving apart from each other that means everything is on the surface of a globe or what they have no idea that means sometimes they were all in one point and they opened up and they are moving apart radially every from one point that's why they say this big bang theory from one point it exploded 
and everything is going from that point radiating out. When they radiate out, they all seem to be moving away from each other. This is today's scientific fact. And they do all the now instruments are all, you know, become absolute, how far they can go. Now they do everything in mathematics. There's no point in The light that you see from the star, that is the light that has emanated from there. It takes so many light years to reach you. So you are never seeing the now. You are thinking that, okay, today I am seeing, the today star is there. It, today star is not there. What you are seeing is the star that was there billions of light years away. Whether the star exists today, at this point, whether that star exists, you do not know. Because that light came there left that place light years away so there is no point in trying to you know see with the telescope all these things now they are restricted to mathematics in paper they work out if there was a big bang if this is a mass this is a calculation and then if then the mass the velocity the force how far it can go when that force becomes zero then they say the universe will come back will fall back into itself this is the same. There is some principle operating here. Krishna also brings forth this entire existence and then he pulls back his entire existence into him. If, if not for all these modern things, if you see simply see these things, you will not, you will simply think, where is all this universe is, you know, it comes forth and then it goes back inside and no. In the material universe, our science, science has got evidence of an expanding universe. And yesterday we were discussing about time. Time also, they are completely bewildered about time now, scientists. Time is part and parcel, of, it's a fabric of objective world. Otherwise, length, breadth, height, three dimensions, spatial dimensions. They say, okay, that is objective world. Now they see that time is an objective world on par with space. Just like if I have X, Y, Z. Suppose I move a car along the x-axis, 100 meters. And along the x-axis, then I don't move anywhere in the y-axis. Suppose I move in y-axis 10 units and rest here. That means diagonally I drive. Then you are moving, your motion, though you are moving like before, but now you, in one direction you are moving less, in another direction you are moving. In both directions you cannot say, if I go diagonally, I cannot say I have moved 100 here and 100 here. No. So they are related. X and Y is related. If you change your direction, part of the direction goes here. Part of the velocity goes here. This goes here. They have found out between space and time, the similar equation is there. Space and time, similar equation is there. That means it, it is another dimension. Nowadays the world is not spoken of as, as space. World is spoken of as space-time. Why? Because at the, at the relativity, special relativity, Einstein, in that he is, there is a thing that a very, a very, in a way, very, you know, unique discovery he made. Speed of light is fixed in every frame of reference. Suppose I take a ball and I run with the ball. My velocity is 10 kilometers per hour and I throw the ball at say 30 kilometers per hour. So the ball will move at 40 kilometers per hour. Suppose you had a photon I run with 10 kilometers and I throw the photon at 30 kilometers per hour. It will always remain 30. You are 
you are running at 10 or running at 20 or running at which means the velocity has to remain same then the two factors that decide the velocity distance and time they are changing the fabric of space is changing when light moves time is a objective factor so time moves they see the time is moving forward but they don't understand why because their equation is all symmetric if I t could also be minus that means, technically speaking, today physics can say, physics says that you can reverse everything back. That means, you know, we are born and then we die. So if you reverse it, <laughs> we get up from the dead and then when you are born, you go, you disappear from this world. <laughs> so these are all very much, you know, predicted by physics as per the equation, as per mathematical equations. Of course, all these things will have, you know, Newton had one idea of motion. Newton thought this world, space is a fixed, rigid thing. Suddenly Einstein found out, no, space in which all this motion is happening is not rigid. It is having its own forces. Newton simply found out the gravitational thing that, okay, G M M R by R squared, that whole gravitational between the planets, how it works, distance between them, all those things, he figured out. He called it as gravitational force. He did not know what is that force. That is a big mystery for a long time. In a magnetic force, you can see in between some magnetic field is there. In gravitational force, nobody could catch there is any field there. But still there is a force. What is this gravitational force? There is no field in between. That is when Einstein discovered that space and time is, space is creating gravitational force. That means this, the curvature of the space is creating gravitational force. Suppose you have a flat rubber sheet and in the rubber sheet you put one weight. You put the sun there in the center, Surya, you put. That's a weight. What will happen? It will depress, no? So Einstein said that this is what is happening. When it depresses, what happens? Surrounding, what happens? There is an orbit created. So that, uh, that space, curvature in the space, is what is moving Earth and other planets. Not something that is emanating from the sun. Some force is coming from the sun and holding it. No. It is the nature of the space making the Earth go around. So space has become very meaningful. Space was nothing before Einstein, before Newton's time. Now space. Now they have got so many paradoxes. Paradoxes. Paradoxes means, you know, they cannot explain many things. When you cannot explain many things, it simply means that again the understanding is not complete. You will see many more wonderful things will be discovered with time. This is not the end of it. When Einstein gave all these things, everything, everybody thought this is the end of it. Nicely, I, we know how the, how the, boy, how the, mecha, how the you know, any body moves, every, everything motion, we understood the motion of the planets, we understood how to send a rocket, we thought everything we knew. And then when Einstein discovered this, oh no, now more, more things are coming out. And so many paradoxes are there because they don't understand the full, full uh, nature. So just see how bewildering this creation of the Lord is. It is not that anywhere near they have towards any understanding. Earlier Galileo, all Aristotle, they all started science by as philosophers. We want to know what is the truth, what is behind this table, what is it. This is how they started. And this is how this philosophy and science were together. And then science said, no, no, we will stick to the objective thing, what we can verify, we see with our five senses. So philosophy got cut off from, uh, you know, understanding of truth. That became one branch and science became another branch. And then they went deeper and deeper into this. And they thought, yes, there is an objective reality. What is this? What is this? We want to find out. Oh, then they say, oh, this is made up of atoms. Now we understand. Fundamental is atoms. 
then further went 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 then finally they went then they are going going to they thought space was static so many things are in the state let us find out what is it. space itself is fluctuating space itself is alive from space matter is coming from space elementary particles are coming nobody can figure out particles are popping out and it is disappearing back into space so we are not able to see so many particles are coming and then it is going into the space these are all verified so i have today completely that means you see the last 100 years the last 200 years they thought we are understanding the world better 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 and the, you know the scientific because of the technology also science and scientific word developed so much of value in among the you know in this world but now among the top scientists also many of them they they change their paradigm they say that science is no longer studying truth science is studying reality not truth we don't care what it is because we are bewildered it can it can go on and on and on what is what what is this i we are not answering anymore we are not searching anymore how does it work that's all reality how does it work enough because we are going to on changing every newton said this is what it is this is what gravitational force is now that has changed and then so many paradoxes are there it can change again so we need to understand all these things also it's not that you know it's we are sitting in some you know with some understanding which is which is uh, totally strange modern science is also you know getting into all this uh, um, unique unbelievable things scientists could not believe all these things when major revolution happens they cannot believe when einstein said that they could not believe when einstein's equation showed that there a, a a rod of one feet scale if it goes at the speed of light that one speed scale will become 6 inches and speeder you go it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller nobody could believe that a clock in a moving vehicle will run slower than a clock in a stationary vehicle nobody could believe and they verified it they put one atomic clock in a flight two times round the globe they went and fine machine you can actually see when you come back and land the clock that was in the flight is run less than the clock that was on the earth static why what is changing this time is dilating that means time is an objective property otherwise we always thought time is a way of seeing things but time is actually a property there time is influencing there any questions rendra chimat bhagavatam ki jai jagat guru shilo prabhupa